I'd now like to introduce uh, the Honourable Carleen Maywald, uh, who is the Chair of the National Water Commission, to uh, formally launch the report. Carleen was the, uh, I'd have to say, pretty high profile South Australian Minister for Water Security and the River Murray during the, the drought. It's nothing like uh, drought to get people interested in uh, the politics of water. Um, but even more important as far as uh, this organisation is concerned, Carleen became a, f a fellow of this academy in 2012. Uh, Honourable Carleen Maywell. Thanks, um, Peter, and uh, thanks for, thank you very much to ATSI for the invitation to be here to launch this very important report. I acknowledge that there are many distinguished people in the room here today, and thank you all for coming along. Well, another report about recycled water, another report about whether we can put it into our drinking supplies. Why is this one different? I think this one is different because of the approach that's been taken by the Centre of Excellence and by ATSI in collaboration to put this report into a context of a, a product that could be part of a suite of products to secure water supply, rather than it being the be all and the end all. Our challenge will now be to actually sell it as such. Because much of the reports that we've seen to date, and I only pulled this one out of the advertiser on the plane this morning, future water via the sewer. The headline that was read to you before regarding the, um, uh, the, the wee, a wee bit of time away are all challenging headlines and from a political perspective are headlines that politicians who are going to take up or not take up this are going to take very seriously. Those are the kind of headlines that in a time when there is plenty of water around that will say to people who are advocating for these products to be put onto the table for consideration, it's too hard. So after the flurry of activity that we've received this 24 hours in relation to the release of the report, our challenge, the Centre's challenge and ATSI's challenge is going to be to keep this report relevant and in front of the policy makers who have at this point in time switched off from water policy. Have you noticed how low it is on the agenda these days, water policy? Did you notice over the federal <coughs> election campaign, did water get mentioned once? A very different scenario that we're living with at the moment, but the very time when things like this should be considered. The report quite rightly points out that during the drought, decisions were made on the basis of crisis and the ability to be able to deliver alternative water supplies in very short term fr time frames. It quite rightly points out that, uh, that this demonstrates a lack of long-term planning. If I was minister, when I was minister, I wished that ministers 20 years ago had done that long-term planning. The fact is, when I was minister, they hadn't, and decisions had to be made in a period of time when the unknown future was what we had to deal with, not the, not the, the benefit of hindsight. Halfway through a drought, you don't know when a drought's going to end. You don't even know you're halfway in it. So now is the time to be putting these kind of, of issues on the table. These are the times that we need to be actually considering what are the suite of products that can be used to augment our water supply systems into the future. We are facing really challenging times. And those challenging times include the prediction that we're going to have 9 billion people on this planet by 2040 or thereabouts that approximately 1.8 billion of those people will be living in, in, in scarce water affected environments, very scarce. Two thirds of the population will be living in environments where, where water is under stress. So we are going to have to consider what other alternatives there are to water supply and we're going to have to look at all, all options. And now is the time to do that. So I challenge everyone in this room now to actually say, terrific, we've launched a fabulous report. It is a great report and it can be used to help policymakers to make decisions now about how they invest in long-term water security um, uh, projects. But how are we going to get this report on their table? We're going to have this flurry, flurry of media attention over the next 24 hours, what next? The National Water Commission has long time had a position in relation to indirect potable. We haven't made a statement in recent times regarding direct potable. Ken Matthews did make some statements back in 2007, 2008 or thereabouts about direct potable being something 
that we need to consider sometime in the future. Our policy statements have been about indirect potable, but supporting that all options should be on the table and virtually supporting everything that this report says, but not mentioning direct potable. It's time for the National Water Commission to step up to the table. Who else can step up to the table and assist with keeping this in front of those people who need to be aware of these matters and how they can be resolved for communities? So I challenge everyone in this room to work out how you can do your bit and where you fit into the system and how you might be able to influence and make sure this report doesn't sit and collect dust when it's actually sent out, that it is, there is follow-up, that there is a, a conversation, because this is only the start of a conversation that needs to be had. And it's a debate that needs to be had amongst the policy makers, those people in departments, those people working in water utilities, so that when it comes to the community conversation that needs to occur, it has the support of a whole range of different sectors, and people aren't going to be blindsided by, by the debate. There's nothing worse than a blindsided politician <laughs> to, to shelve an idea or a concept. I'd like to congratulate ATSI and I'd like to congratulate Stuart in particular for your work. Stuart, the, as the author of this report, you've done a, a fantastic job. I was talking to Stuart just before the, the launch here this morning and I asked Stuart what his, what his um, uh, I guess what his association with ATSI was and how he felt about working with ATSI on this project and I have to say he was very complimentary which didn't surprise me because I've actually worked on a, an ATSI um, research project on the steering committee and I think the process is really really useful. Um, the steering committee process that puts uh, behind a, a research project an enormous amount of intellectual grunt from a range of different areas that provides for a research project to have a lot more depth and understanding about the issues that you're writing about or researching. Stuart said to me that it was terrific that he could, he could have that steering committee in, input and feedback every step of the way that could actually help direct his writing and his research to actually include a range of things that he might not otherwise have considered. And in particular, the areas of risk that need to be dealt with. There's nothing, nothing more important than risk to public health in relation to water supply. And on the ATSI steering committee were some pretty heavy hitters in that regard. And I congratulate all those people who give up their time to, as ATSI fellows to be part of this process because it is incredibly important to give the research work that is undertaken by the academy for the members of the academy to participate in these kind of projects because it actually gives weight it actually adds to the value, as Mark said before, of the integrity and the independence of ATSI as a research body. Uh, so I congratulate ATSI for once again putting together a fantastic group of people to, to support the writer of this report, to actually acknowledge um, ATSI's contribution um, to, to the debate and the starting of the conversation again, because many, often many conversations need to be started before a policy gets adopted, and this is again another step in that conversation. So congratulations to ATSI, congratulations to you, Stuart, on a fantastic report, and to all of the ATSI steering committee members who were part of developing and supporting this process. Congratulations to you all, it's a terrific report, and I think adds very positively to the debate, and our challenge now is to keep it there within the day debate and make it a conversation that ends in a result. And with that, I would like to launch the report and congratulate you all on being here today to witness what I think is a very important day. Thank you.